Guys, this might be the hardest video I've ever done. I don't really know how to contextualize my disappointment, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So a few months ago, we reported on what was, at the time, the most exciting Wimpy Kid news that had come out to date. And look, the Wimpy Kid franchise was at a really weird spot. It was like nostalgic, but also current. There were some great movies out that were becoming beloved classics and aging like fine Italian wine. And then they made a fourth one and the internet got really mad. So when we got the news that there was going to be an anime animated Wimpy Kid project, I mean, it just felt like the best option. These books were mostly illustration, and the stories were honestly very cartoonishly comedic. Now the films did an incredible job of like carrying that cartoonishness over to a live action format, but I and many others always kind of believed that this would work best as something animated. And it looked like we were finally getting that. I mean, even the promotional pictures looked pretty cool. So then we sat and waited, like the loyal Wimpy Kid fanbase we are, until the fateful day when this film came out. And then it came out, and now I'm mad again. This film, which isn't really a film because it's 56 minutes, is just titled Diary of Wimpy Kid. Confusingly, I don't even know how to Google it because there's so many things that come up when you type that in. I guess we'll call it like Wimpy Kid 2021, right? That'll be its infamous name. I see what they were going for, but at the same time, I have no idea what they were going for. I guess I would describe it as like a, a made for TV movie, but there's no more TV, so it's just on Disney Plus. A made for streaming film. Maybe that's what we'll call it. I like that. I did a little research, a little digging, and this was actually a originally supposed to be like a holiday special, which kind of explains the weird nature of it, like why it's only 56 minutes. And yeah, it was originally supposed to air on television, but when Disney did their whole Disney Plus thing and they needed new material to help push the platform, it was decided that it made the most sense just to go on Disney Plus. Now, I'm kind of cynical to the fact that when a major company makes a streaming service, they usually pump out something, no matter what it is, from their very well-known IPs to get people drawn to their new streaming service. And I can't blame them, that's the game, it's all competition now, it's a garbage fight but this is the world we live in. But I have to be honest, this does affect my view of the film a little bit because it kind of feels like something that was made for Disney Plus as opposed to just a Wimpy Kid project that was made for the sake of making a Wimpy Kid project. The film itself is just a retelling of the first book, but animated. And yeah, the screenplay was written by Jeff Kinney, which is kind of confusing, I'll explain later. But really, it's just this rushed retelling of the first book condensed into under an hour with animation that... <laughs> I, I, I just don't like it. Look, animation's really hard. There's talented people that work on everything, and I know that talented people worked on this, but why, why does it look like that? I think the problem is they tried too hard to translate like the stiff 2D illustrations of the Wimpy Kid books to a 3D environment, and this has been done successfully in the past. Like, look at the Peanuts movies. Those are beautiful, but the character designs. Like, the whole appeal of Diary for Wimpy Kid is that it's like drawings from a middle schooler, so everyone looks kind of off. To just rip that from the page, and buff it out to 3D leads to some pretty interesting character designs, to say the least. Some that stuck out to me were Manny, who looks like my sleep paralysis demon, and like the bullies who bullied them on Halloween. Just something about like the bottom lips and the mouths. Greg's mouth especially, it's like always slyly open and moving around. I'm no animation expert, but I know when something looks off but I'm getting way too ahead of myself. As for what the film is about, well, there's really not too much to say here. It's really just kind of like a condensed retelling of the first book, which maybe this is meant to create like an accessible way for a new younger generation to get into the Wimpy Kid series, especially cause like no one reads anymore. And I could kind of see it doing that, but also I don't know if I'd show this to my kids because it might scare them. So the Wimpy Kid movie is a CGI outing, which a few years ago would have been like super disappointing to hear. But with how recent CGI animated films have been able to mix 2D and 3D elements together to create a pretty distinct art style that's absolutely eye candy. There were so many cool things they could have done here, and they just didn't. Unfortunately, the movie doesn't really try anything new, and it looks like something that would have came out like 10 years ago, which would have been fine 10 years ago. Look, in today's day and age, it really is on the level of a fan film, someone made in Blender or Source Filmmaker, which is only impressive when it's done by a sole individual or small team, not a big budget studio with money behind it owned by a mouse with an iron fist. It's serviceable, and I'm not gonna lie, like, I kind of got used to it halfway through, sort of like how if you submerge yourself in freezing cold water, after a while you just go numb, but after Spider-Verse, Peanuts, The Mitchells vs. The Machines, and so many other great animated movies, to roll out a film that looks like this is just kind of embarrassing. 
The unique art style of the book is adapted just very poorly, partly due to how basic the film already looks, but good lord, the eyes, mouths, and especially the hair on characters just create something that's freaky and kind of uncomfortable to look at. It's also inconsistent. Greg and Roderick have strands of noodle hair that are kind of freaky to look at, mainly Roderick. Greg's hair has a mind of its own half the time. Other characters have hair that basically look like they were dreaded, and it's not the move. And then some characters just have little dots to represent little to no hair. It's all over the place. This would have been a great area to take advantage of the medium. Greg and Roger could have had flat 2D hair that looked more like Ed and Nettie. And for as ugly as these characters are when adapted into 3D, there's still enough common sense to make thin hair in 2D no depth whatsoever. And again, I think it's the idea that they're really directly translating from the book's art style here. When, again, the whole art style of the Wimpy Kid series is that they are crude drawings by a middle schooler. I'm sure if Greg was somehow making a 3D animated movie based off his diary, he would have just gone back to the drawing board with character designs and not just lifted them straight from the pages. I get it for a sense of familiarity, but it just doesn't land. And despite the screenplay being written by Kenny himself, I'm sorry to say a lot of these jokes just didn't land for me. And that's because the visuals just don't give these jokes any flair. There's no emphasis on them, a kid gets dragged down the hallway yelling help me, and there's no punch up, no intensity to add to the humor, it kind of just feels a little bit lifeless. Like, just stare into Freckly's eyes with me. There's nothing behind those pupils. No soul. The 2D animated journal scenes kind of feel phoned in. They almost look better in the live action movie. Also, I have to point out, I recently rewatched it for this video, and this film did not have to look this good. I don't know, this is just a classic. Speaking of comparisons to the original, let's talk about the acting. I wouldn't necessarily say the voice actors are miscasted, and I think they did a great job, and it's really cool whenever they hire child voice actors. I always try to give them benefit of the doubt, but I feel like the voice direction here is just a little off. Characters often have flat delivery and just sound too normal. The voices aren't really cartoony, there's no distinct personality to them, which kind of seems to be an overarching theme. Greg doesn't sound like a narcissistic sociopath, Rowley doesn't sound like a nerdy kid who isn't in a rush to grow up and is content being his goofy self, Mr. Heffley doesn't sound like a complete beta, 60% at least though. If they really wanted to get creative with it, Rowley could sound something closer to Erwin from Billy and Mandy or Spud from American Dragon, and Mr. Heffley could sound like Bob from the Oblongs or like Jerry from Rick and Morty, which would have just been perfect, even though he only had like five lines. All of this comes together to create a performance that sounds more like a table read than an actual movie performance. Also, the mom's lines sound like they were recorded in another dimension, but I gotta give it to the voice actress, she kinda kills it as a mom. Nitpicks aside, I think the biggest problem with this film overall is that it just kinda feels mid. And you know what? As disappointed as I am, because I really wanted an animated Wimpy Kid project that kinda stood out, I think we've been pretty spoiled these last few years with animated movies that could have been mid but ended up being spectacular, and I kind of just expected the trend to continue for this one. Instead, we got this watered-down retelling of the first book, with an art style that doesn't really land. Which goes back to the question, who is this really for? And like I said before, maybe it's just meant for a new generation of kids to discover the Wimpy Kid franchise. Maybe this will make them want to buy the first book. It's kind of nostalgic now, which is scary to say, because that makes me feel old. I also just want to take a second to point out the fact that Roderick has AirPods, which is honestly the highlight of the entire movie. Just look at how he takes them out of his ears. This is just beautiful. At the end of the day, I could go on and on, but really there's just not too much to say here. If you have an hour and you want to be reminded of how truly evil Greg Heffley is, then go ahead and give this a watch. But honestly, this is something that could have been incredible, that really missed the mark, and I hope we get another chance to see the Wimpy Kid story animated sometime in the future, hopefully with a little bit better execution. Lord knows there's enough source material to make like 20 Peter Jackson length films here, so I have hope. That being said guys, as usual, I want to know what you guys think about this film. Did you love it? Did you absolutely despise it? Let us know in those comments down below. I'm Nemo, this was a Wimpy Kid rant, and I'll see you next time. Peace.